Hi. Hi. <laughs> we're still on the 405. Yeah. Uh, no, we're on the 710 now. Oh, Just kidding. We're still on the 710 now. <laughs> Only like um, an hour later. <laughs> Hosier is now playing and we're doing the what, what tag? Well, we already did a popular bad habits. Yeah, bad habits. Bad habits book tag. Bad habit okay. number one. Recording while driving. <laughs> Been drinking an alcoholic book character. My answer is <laughs> Hamish from The Hunger Games was the first one that popped up. Uh, my brand. <laughs> Number two, biting your nails, a book that made you nervous. Um, for me, it was The Foxhole Court. Um, by all three of the books in that series. Yeah, all three of those books. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for me, it was, um, actually, uh, I read this book called Ghost of Tsunami, I talked about it before. It's basically about the Japan Japan tsunami that happened in 2011, and it's kind of um, reminiscent of Hiroshima by John Hersey in the sense that it's like narrative style journalism, and it goes through like the people that were affected in the region specifically, and like one of the main like narratives throughout the the story book is um this school with a bunch of like kindergartners and tiny kids in elementary school that like got completely wiped out and all the kids uh, died and the parents were left asking for questions and nobody wanted to give them answers and when they eventually did find the bodies they were just like bloated and like full of sand and like it was really hard to read that's my answer what the fuck <laughs> Uh, number three, unhealthy eating, a book that mentions or for which the theme is eating disorders. Um, well, I don't know if this counts. Well, I guess it counts, right? It doesn't really mention. This Charlie and the Chocolate Factory count is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah, overeating. Mm -hmm. And like the pop, yeah, yeah, like, it's like, if you analyze it. <laughs> you analyze it deep. Me from the future, um, and I wanted just to a little clar to clarify a little bit on why I said Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because I noticed I didn't finish my thought. Basically, that was the first thing that came to my mind because I felt like a lot of the story behind or in the actions the characters took and the manipulative nature of Willy Wonka, a lot of it was based on food whether it be the, the excess of food or the complete hunger, you know, Charlie and his family felt of starving, basically, and I felt like um, Willy Wonka as a character kind of created these scenarios by these disorders. So yeah, that was kind of where I was going with that thought. It's kind of half-baked and a stretch, but it's literally the only book I could think of because I don't read a lot of books with eating disorders, so if you have any crude recommendations, um, please let me know because I that's not something that I read often and I that I'm not familiar with so yeah um, I will accept the answer uh, for me it's one that I just read for uh, my June TBR my lesbian experience with loneliness um, the author mentions that she had an eating disorder I think that it's kind of by the end addressed and it's resolved. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, she didn't. Yeah. Uh, she uh, starved herself a lot. She's anorexic. And it was very sad. I don't read a lot of books with like. I, I should. I feel like I should more. Yeah. But I honestly can't remember. That's why I said Charlie Chalk. Actually, I'm the freaking Chalk. Staying up late, a book you read into the night. All the books. Yeah. Like basically any book for me. Yeah. Any book. Terrible. Uh, recently, for me, it was probably. I I did that with that book too. Yeah, and Cersei was really bad. I started it at 11 p.m. and literally stayed up until 8 a.m. reading it, and I had work. Yeah, I don't like stopping. Like, if I'm really into it, I don't like stopping. I just like, nope, I need gotta to go. go. Gotta go. Uh, it's not a choice. You must know. Number five, procrastination. A 
book you want to read, but you keep putting it off. Oh shit. You asked this question while I look at my phone. Okay. Well, while she. Oh. <laughs> um, for me, it is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Read it! I this. <laughs> I'll get to it eventually. It's really good. I'll get to it eventually. Probably. Um, okay. Probably. Well, one of the workbooks I just bought and I haven't had time to read it is Nocturna by uh, Maya Montagna. And I think that's how you say her last name. But I bought it and I haven't read it yet. And I need to read it. It's Latinx fantasy adventure. Um, a book in which an author or a character uses colorful language. For what? me, it was Holden from Capture in the Rye. It was the first thing that popped up in my life. I stand this book. It is based, um, ins based and inspired by the Popol Vuh, which is uh, a Quiche Mayan codex. It's pre-Hispanic. It's one of the only remaining works from that time. And uh, more Mesoamerican inspired books should be written. And yeah, I stand. Yeah. Oh, it has a, has a death in the maiden trope too, which is lovely. <laughs> Um, for me, it's the Foxhole Court, <laughs> the All for the Game series. Everyone should read it and love it and stand it. We see things. Yay! Number eight, overspending an expensive book you bought. Well, this is the same answer as <laughs> as the previous one for me. Uh, I pre-ordered God's Jade and Shadow. Oh, I'm not in focus. Um, like last week and it's like $27 and I don't waste money on books so that's a big spend for me yeah um I think recently I bought the hard I haven't read it yet it's I'm saving it for next month um Solace by Gail Kiki <laughs> start to the C I don't want to go I'm too lazy to go Gail C Gail C <laughs> wink um yeah, that was kind of expensive. I don't remember how much it was exactly. It was like 20 something. Which usually I don't buy hardcover because I'm broke. <laughs> but yeah, it was really pretty. It looks good. And I've heard that the story is good. So, yay. It's fine. A book you lied about having read. Well, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm not gonna say I make it a habit of not fully reading books. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had eye contact with the lady in the other car. <laughs> <That's awkward. laughs> um, yeah, it's for, so like the Odyssey, the Iliad, wow. I skimmed because it's long. It's very long and boring, both of them for me. I'm sure there are more books that I, I think I skimmed 1984. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever fully read that. Mm -hmm. So I'm a liar. I'm pretty sure I said I did. He's like, this is really <laughs> reminiscent of 1984. <laughs> yeah, it's very Big Brother. <laughs> very big Brother vibes. Um, uh -huh. uh, for me, for, uh, I had one and now I lost it. Okay, um, Othello? Yeah, let's go with Othello. You haven't read Othello? No. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read a lot of shapes here, but shape here stuff. So. I haven't read Othello, I haven't read, um... Oh, it's so good, it has one of the best villains. Iago's a bitch, I love him. Who? His name's Iago. Oh, He's who the parrot's name after. can see the city's line. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm shook. Number 10, speeding, a book you read really fast. Every book I read? Yeah. 
I don't know why, because I, I don't know if you this happened to you in elementary school too, but they would always like time you to see how fast you could read things. I'm like, that's stayed in my mind, and now I like always want to like rush through my books for some reason, so I like do it naturally. So like, yeah. when I read a book, uh, when I'm in the mood, I just speed through it. I don't like dilly dallying. Yeah, sometimes I need to take a break because I can't handle emotions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm I just need a break from the emotions. So yes. Uh, Jenna, we mm. love Jenna. Okay, cool. Yeehaw. <laughs> I'm Andrea. Uh, this was originally supposed to be my what was your concert slash reading vlog, LA reading vlog, but I think or I'm pretty sure my phone got stolen <laughs> at the concert last night, so I have zero of the footage that I took because I only took my phone with me so instead I'll tell you guys about how I spent 30 minutes looking between gravestones and headstones for my missing phone basically one second my phone was in my pocket and the next it was not the only maybe or saving you know hope that there is that my phone did not get jacked is that it fell into a porta potty but I used find my iPhone, or find my phone, I mean, and it was, it could not be heard from the porta potties. I like triple checked that shit. I had the security guards triple check that, triple check that shit. And there was like no signal, and it was just this big thing, anyways. So at the end of the concert, I did the find my phone thing again, and it showed my phone at the very edge of the cemetery. Like basically, we were here, and it showed that my phone was like way over here. Now, uh, this concert took place at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. I should have explained that at the start of all this, but Hollywood Forever Cemetery is a very um, popular venue in Los Angeles for concerts and movies. Uh, a lot of people bring their blankets and they sit down on the field, on the open field, and watch films like Jaws and other classic films. Nosferatu is another one on the wall and just chill out and relax. And a lot of popular artists like Lana Del Rey, Arctic Monkeys, and Hosier um, do special do their concerts there. Um, this was a rescheduled date. Originally, I had my concert in April, but that got canceled due to high winds. So I came back thinking I was going to have a swell time, and I just got my phone lost instead. My, my friend's phone said that my phone was at the corner of the cemetery where literally nothing was being held at. So this is a pretty serious cemetery because a lot of famous people are buried there, so it was like past the graves of Johnny Ramone and Didi Ramone. It was like the very, very edge corner, which is kind of spooky. We, I walked over there with a security guard, literally all black, very quiet. There was like the occasional cat running back and forth. There was like insect noises. There were spider webs. There was no lights and it was spooky to be honest. <laughs> and um, it just, we couldn't find it, which was really strange. And I'm just gonna pretend or go with my theory that a ghost has it, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs>